Good evening. Uh, I'm Cliff Seiner, one of the PAs here at the Maxwell Clinic. Uh, you may remember me from a couple of weeks ago uh, when I did the group visit on community in health. Tonight, I'm really excited because I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects, which is metabolism and specifically talking about how the brain, the thyroid work together and then send messages out into the body, uh, which leads to a feedback back to the brain to let us know about our metabolism. I think there is a lot of confusion here. And I know that when I'm taking care of patients one on one, um, it's uh, it's always something that's very enlightening. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you this evening. So uh, a couple of housekeeping items. Um, you'll be on mute during the, uh, during the group visit. Um, but if you have a question, then type it in the, type your question into the Q&A box. And then at the end, um, then I will go over those and, I, and I'll, I'll answer those for you. If uh, for some reason my internet goes down, then please just hang out and I will try to get it going. I haven't had any problems. Um, in quite a while, but you know, that's always when uh, that when you say you haven't had a problem, that's always when a problem happens. Okay, so tonight we're going to talk about the anatomy. So we're going to look at where these hormones are coming from in the brain, how they're interacting with the thyroid, what the thyroid does with those hormones, and then how they go out into the body. Uh, we're going to be talking about how it works and how it really works. So we'll look at a couple of different, um, a couple of different ways in which people will explain it um, and how there can be some pitfalls to look out for. And then what does this mean for you, right? This is not just an anatomy and physiology lesson, but how can this impact your health? I think that's, that's important. That's why we're here tonight, right? And then next steps for you being your Maxwell, because that's the goal. Right? The goal of Maxwell Care is to help you reach your goals of optimal health. So I want to make sure that before we end tonight um, that I've answered that question, how does this help you and what is your next step? So anatomy. Okay, so the hypothalamus is in the brain and this receives information. So you see that that's indicated here by those two little uh, minuses and the arrows that are sort of pointing towards, pointing towards the hypothalamus. So that the, the brain receives information on what the, um, what the body says is happening with metabolism. So on how fast or how slow it is, the brain receives that. And then the brain takes that information and it makes a decision. Do I need my thyroid to speed up or do I need it to slow down? And then based on that information, it sends a hormone to the pituitary gland. And then the pituitary gland, which sits right underneath the brain, it's about the size of a pea, releases a lot of different hormones. One of those is TSH, which you've probably heard of before, especially when talking about the thyroid. That's thyroid stimulating hormone. So thyroid stimulating hormone goes from the pituitary gland down to the thyroid, where it then asks the thyroid to make T4 primarily. And you can see here, I've got two octagons, one says T4, one says T3. So that's about 90-10. So about 90% T4 is going to be made in the thyroid, and about 10%, maybe 7 to 10% is actually going to be T3. Now that's really, really important because T4 is the inactive form of this hormone. T4 doesn't actually cause anything to speed up or slow down. It's sort of like a Lego block. Whereas T3 is like the gas pedal for our metabolism. So this is the active form of the hormone. Another way to think about this would be like a factory. So I sometimes think about um, never actually been on the floor of a car factory, but I assume this is how it goes. Uh, if any of you have more experience, um, you, can, you can let me know if this works or not. So think of the brain as headquarters or corporate. And so based on the feedback that they're getting from the car dealers, uh, they, they know whether we should speed up production or slow down production. 
And so then they send a signal to the pituitary gland, which then sends out TSH. So I want you to think about TSH as being the communication between corporate and the production floor where the cars are actually made. So if your TSH is really high, then that's like corporate yelling at the workers down on the floor. Hurry up, you've got to make more cars. We need more vehicles. So this would be the brain sensing that metabolism is slow and we need to rev up production. So then in a perfect world, the thyroid will then receive this TSH coming from the brain and will say, oh, I need to work really hard. So then it will make more T4. So then that T4 elevates and then hopefully T3 elevates and then the metabolism is now sped up. There's more production. Now we have uh, good hair growth and we're losing weight like we want to and we feel good and we wake up energized, right? Like that's what we're hoping for. That's what we're hoping that a, a youth thyroid or a balanced uh, thyroid and a balanced metabolism will give us. So there's something else though we haven't talked about. You see that big RT3 right there in the middle of the screen? So that RT3 stands for reverse T3. So if T3 is the gas pedal, then I wonder what reverse T3 would be. Well, it's the brake pedal, right? It makes sense. So if we start out with T4, right? T4, like I said, is the inactive form. And then we want our body to make T3 so that we can speed up metabolism. But if there's something going on, right? Think about why you would push the brake in your own car. Normally we push the brake because there's an accident ahead. There's a warning. There's something going on that says we should slow down, right? So if that happens in your body, if it senses inflammation or it senses starvation or it senses other things that we're going to talk about, then it's going to slow down metabolism. And that's going to increase reverse T3. So now we've talked about this pathway, right? From the hypothalamus receiving the information, then it, it computing that information, sending a signal to the pituitary gland, which then sends a signal to the thyroid itself, which makes T4. And hopefully that T4 is converted into T3, but sometimes it can be converted into reverse T3. Before we move on, I want to give you one more illustration. I want you to think of an individual cell in your body as a wood-burning stove. And these wood-burning stoves, they don't burn wood, right, in our body. We burn sugar. We burn carbohydrates or ketones, right? We could burn these different things. Now, if the wood stove begins to get too hot, then we want to close the damper. If our cells get too hot, or we could say get too inflamed, then we want to close the damper on the cell. And you could think of reverse T3 as doing that. So reverse T3 actually cools down these individual cells. So that should make sense to a lot of people who've suffered with hypothyroidism, right? Because if you've got really high reverse T3 or if you have hypothyroid, you know that your temperature is hard to control and it tends to stay low. So what if you had a whole lot of T3 and the, there's a lot of inflammation in the body and so it's, there's a lot of heat, right? If there's a lot of heat or a lot of inflammation, we're going to increase reverse T3. So you can almost think of that increased reverse T3 as a fire alarm. This is letting us know something is wrong. Okay, so let's talk about what you've heard about, uh, about the thyroid. So a lot of times we'll have patients who have been to see specialists or maybe primary care and they went to the specialist or they went to their primary care clinician and they said, I feel like I'm hypothyroid. 
my temperature is low, my hair is thinning, I feel uh, weak and fatigued, and I'm gaining weight, and I can't do anything about it, even if when I don't eat. And so the specialist or the primary care provider, they'll say, okay, let me take a look at your thyroid. And so they will look at TSH and T4. And if those numbers come back within the normal range, then they'll say, you're fine, right? Although I wish they wouldn't say you're fine. I wish they would say your thyroid is working correctly. Now see, there's a big difference there because if your TSH is normal and if you, your T4 is normal, then it is a true statement to say that your thyroid is working fine. Now you may say, well, wait a minute, Cliff. Now I have been to a lot of integrative and holistic specialists. I've been under functional medicine care for a long time. And I know that it doesn't mean that your thyroid's fine just because TSH and T4 are normal. So what I want to do here is I want to help you sort of change that paradigm. Because what I would say is that if your TSH and T4 is normal, your metabolism may not be normal, but your thyroid is actually functioning correctly, right? Because there's another step that has to happen here. This is the step that's often missed in conventional medicine, where they don't look at reverse T3 or T3. See, because they're not seeing about the gas or the break or the open, uh, the, um, the open damper or the closed damper of the wood stove. They're not looking at where the rubber meets the road on your metabolism. Now, in integrative and holistic medicine, you may have heard them you know, say that, um, yeah, you're right. I, I looked at more labs and your thyroid's not fine. Uh, but then it seems like there's a contradiction, right? It seems like the conventional providers are saying different, something different than the integrative and holistic providers are saying. And I want to say that it's not so much different, right? It's not that we're saying that one is saying the thyroid's fine and one is saying the thyroid's not fine. I think that one is just not looking, the conventional medicine provider is not looking at your metabolism. And the integrative, holistic, or functional medicine uh, a clinician is just trying to, to, to use the same language that you are when they say that the thyroid is not functioning well, even though the thyroid may be fine, it's the metabolism that's off. This, this may seem like not that big of a deal, but when it comes to treatment, I think it's a huge deal because as a functional medicine clinician, my goal is to seek out the root calls. I want to know why your metabolism is not functioning well. I don't want to just know that your T3 is low or that your reverse T3 is elevated. I want to dig deeper than that. And if, if, I'm, if I say that there's something wrong with the thyroid, it may leave me stuck there. And that can lead to people giving medication maybe where it's not needed. So that could be giving you um, you know, Synthroid or even one of the natural uh, thyroid hormones uh, like Armor. Um, and, and, and that could, it could lead to not digging deep enough to figure out what's actually wrong. Now, it is true. Sometimes we may need to use medicine and that's totally fine, but we should make sure that we're not missing something first. So at the bottom of this slide, I say be cautious with Cytomel. So if you've never heard of Cytomel before, it's T3. Sometimes what I've seen uh, in patients that come to the Maxwell Clinic from, from elsewhere is that they will have had the full workup and the reverse T3 was elevated. So what the clinician did then was say, I'm going to give you T3. Because if I give you T3, if I give you the gas pedal, if I give you gas, we can overcome this reverse T3. That's true. You can do that. And if, I, if you have elevated reverse T3 and I give you Cytomel, we will see that reverse T3 go down. But I want to warn you that that is a lot like seeing the fire alarm go off and then instead of 
looking for the fire instead of trying to understand why why is my body inflamed? Why is my reverse T3 elevated? Instead of figuring that out, we just knock it off the wall. We say, oh, it's probably not important. Let's just take some T3. It'll make you feel great. And let's push on. That's dangerous. If reverse T3 is elevated because there's inflammation in the body or some infection or some other issue going on, then it is so important that we seek out that root cause and not just cover it up. So I think it's important then, if we're gonna say we're not gonna cover up reverse T3 with medicine, or we're not gonna lower it with medicine, then we have to be thinking about what causes an elevated reverse T3. So mainly it's two things, inflammation and stress. And I would say that those things are very, very similar. I would differentiate them by saying that inflammation is usually stress from within the body. So this is something that's putting a stress on the system. This could be from leaky gut. This could be from an illness like a bacterial infection, a viral infection, a fungal infection. This could be from an autoimmune disorder. If you have um, thyroid antibodies, they're actually attacking the thyroid, or it could be from a toxic load. A uh, toxic load could be, um, you know, you're not able to, to detox very well because of liver injury. Maybe there's an issue with your kidneys, or maybe you just need to sweat, or maybe something's going on with all three. But those things all need to be looked at if we're concerned about toxic load. I want to back up for a second and talk about autoimmune, because I think that's really, really important. So if you have these thyroid antibodies that are attacking the thyroid, then I want you to think about like what that may look like in your labs. So let's say that we have an elevated TSH, right? So remember, that's the brain yelling at the thyroid. That's corporate yelling at the production workers, work harder. But then we don't really see an elevated uh, T4. Right? We don't really see the product that should be coming from the thyroid. So I think about that as you've got these workers that are on the production line and they are making T4 and they're doing exactly like what they're supposed to do. And then they start getting stung by bees and we'll call these bees uh, autoimmune disease or thyroid antibodies. And they're attacking the thyroid as it's trying to work. And corporate doesn't understand what's going on. And it's yelling, work harder, work harder. So it's telling the thyroid to work harder. And at the same time, these workers, your thyroid, are being stung by bees. That's going to make it really, really difficult to do their job. So what we want to do is we want to work on bringing those antibodies down. We can do that by lowering inflammation, by targeting other antibodies, sometimes food, sometimes uh, environmental allergens, bring those down so that the, the body, the thyroid tends to, let, or not the thyroid itself, but the body tends to make less uh, thyroid antibodies. Okay, so that those things are inflammation, illness, leaky gut, autoimmune disorder, toxic load. Then I want you to think about stress. So when we say stress, I want you to think about inflammation from outside the body things that are putting pressure on us. So this could be emotional stress. Maybe it's relational. Maybe we're struggling in our marriage. Maybe we're having family issues. Maybe we're fighting with our neighbors or we're having trouble finding community. Maybe it's occupational. You know, maybe we're, we're struggling with our job or, um, you know, maybe we're in a pandemic and we can't work or, or we have too much work to do or there's too much pressure being put on, on us at work. Any of these things that can cause emotional stress on us can elevate our reverse T3. Or it could be mental stress, right? Like I, when I think of mental stress as opposed to emotional stress, I think about problem solving, right? Think about being in school or think about, um, you know, maybe you are doing a new job, but you've got a lot to learn. You've just got a, a lot of rewiring of the brain and new neurons that are being created, new connections that are, being connect, that are being made that create a lot of stress on the body. 
So we have to make sure that when we're in those times of our life, that we're doing everything we can to support our bodies. Or it could be insomnia. Sleep is extremely important. And if we're not sleeping well, that's going to elevate reverse T3. All of these things, whether it's inflammation or stress, all of these things increase cortisol levels. That's why I like to keep inflammation and stress so connected because in the body, they do the same things, right? If I have an illness, if I'm fighting, a, if I'm fighting COVID and, or I'm um, having struggles at, at my work, right? Both of those things, while they're very different stressors, they both are going to increase cortisol. They're both going to create an inflammatory response within the body that we need to cope with. And one of the ways that we cope with that is by increasing reverse T3, which slows down our metabolism. So let's talk for a little bit about true hypothyroid. I think it's so important to differentiate, and I know you've heard me like hammer this sort of over and over. Uh, it's so important to differentiate true hypothyroid from elevated reverse T3 because they are treated differently. So with true hypothyroid, usually you're going to have an elevated TSH and you're going to have a low T4. So that means the brain is working. The brain knows that we need to increase metabolism and it's sending a signal through the pituitary gland down into the thyroid via the TSH. It's sending a signal to say work harder but the thyroid is not able to do it. So we have to think about what are some things that can cause this true hypothyroid. It could be nutrition. So you could be missing specific nutrients, nutrients like iodine, selenium. There's a lot of others. You could be missing one of these nutrients or a few of these nutrients, which could be because of leaky gut. It could be because of decreased absorption. It could be because of issues with your genes, or it could be your diet. Also autoimmune, which we touched on already, right? I, I talked about how you've got these thyroid antibodies that are attacking the thyroid. They're preventing it from making the T4 that it so desires to make. It could be from chronic stress or inflammation, as we've talked about. And it can make you feel and present the same as elevated reverse T3. So true hypothyroid can look just like elevated reverse T3. So just because you have a low temperature, it's hard for you to lose weight. Um, you're ha you have thinning hair, you have a lot of fatigue. That doesn't mean that it's true hypothyroid. It could be elevated reverse T3. And because those things are treated so differently, it's important that you have a provider like those of us at the Maxwell Clinic that are really digging deep to make sure we know what's driving these symptoms. So next steps. So what are we going to do to make sure that we can optimize metabolism. So we talked a little bit about sleep. So the, these are steps that I would like for you to do just to kind of set back maybe this evening, you know, pull out, pull out a piece of paper and just take an inventory. And are these things even right now, even tonight, that you can make a difference that is going to help make sure your reverse T3 is low and that your T3 is elevated and get you feeling your best. So you want to make sure that you're sleeping about eight hours a night. Some of us need a little more. Some of us need a, a little less. None of us need a lot less. So if you're surviving on four to five hours of sleep a night, that's not good. If you're sleeping a lot more than eight hours, nine, 10 hours, something's going on there. Something is, is, uh, is not right with your circadian rhythm. It's not right with your thyroid. And that really should be investigated. You want to make sure that this sleep is good sleep. You want to make sure the room is dark. You want to make sure it's quiet. Um, you know, even if you, uh, one of the things that I, I forgot to mention that can elevate reverse T3 is working third shift, just working third shift, not 
living within the um, within the cycle of the rest of society can actually elevate your reverse T3. So you want to try to go to sleep, you know, sometime between 9, 10, 11, something like that, uh, and sleep, you know, through the night hours. Nutrition. Nutrition is very important. I, I mentioned the two, um, two of the, the nutrients, uh, selenium and, and iodine, I believe it was. Uh, and like I said, there are a lot of others. So the best way to get this nutrition is going to be from organic, wholesome food. And there are a lot of us that don't have access to that food. Uh, or we have such a deficit that we need to use supplements, if even for a short time, to try and, and get those nutrient levels up, to drench our bodies in these life-giving nutrients that our thyroid uh, needs. So if that's the case, I would encourage you to get that checked out. I would encourage you to um, you know, have some labs done and make sure that you do have the, the nutrients that you need. Then movement. You know, it's so interesting that movement, the amount of movement that we do when we move, of course, we're heating our bodies up. Our cells are burning oxygen. They're burning, uh, burning carbohydrates, burning sugar. And it's a big part of what keeps a thyroid stable. So a big part of our metabolism is movement. If we don't need to burn energy, our bodies aren't going to burn it. So if we stay sedentary, if we aren't moving, then our reverse T3 is going to elevate, our T3 is going to drop, and our body is going to conserve. You know, it's interesting that there's something else that raises reverse T3, uh, that I forgot to mention, and that is being a bear. Yes, that's right, being a bear. So if you're a bear and you hibernate, then your reverse T3 elevates. And it makes sense, right? Like if reverse T3 is going to slow down metabolism, then wouldn't it make sense that if I was hibernating, that my reverse T3 would elevate because I have no need to burn energy? Well, that's the same sort of thing if we are sedentary. If we don't get up, if we don't go move around, then we also will increase our reverse T3. Stress management. Stress management is so important. I um, have been working with a patient over the last few months who we first started out together and reverse T3 was pretty high. And, um, you know, metabolism was not optimized. And so we, we, uh, we, we got that we got that worked out. You know, me and the patient came up with a plan based on their labs, based on the physical exam. Uh, that made a lot of sense. Patient was on board with it and they really improved over the three months between labs. And everything looked great. Well, then I had the patient come back uh, and do some more labs three months later and reverse T3 was really high. And I was like, okay, what's changed? Has your sleep changed? No, not really. I'm still sleeping the same amount. Uh, how about nutrition? No, nope, stay the same. I mean, still eating a really healthy, really clean diet, still exercising, still going to the gym three days a week, still walking outside, uh, walking her dog. Um, but stress had gone up because she had had a job change. And so she was really anxious because this new boss uh, was just really hard on her and she, it had, she had a new job and she wanted to do well. And she was, she was trying to hold a standard really high and it was causing a significant amount of stress and, and it showed in her reverse T3. So we worked on stress management. So you wanna work on stress management from two, two perspectives really. One is the amount of stress that you're dealing with. So what are the tasks that are on your plate? Right? Because if we can lower the amount of tasks on your plate, then we can lower stress. But often that's not very easy to do. Most of us can't quit our jobs, move to the beach. You know, that's not going to happen, right? Um, most of us can't change jobs or we can't, you know, we have children. We've got to take care of our kids. They're not going to go away. Uh, we have households to manage. That's not going to go away. So we can't often, we can't always take things off our plate. So then we have to think about meditation. We have to think about prayer. We have to think about support systems within our community. We have to think of other ways to help us manage stress. So I would encourage you to think about that. And when, when we get finished here tonight, think about it on a scale of one to 10, 
where is your stress level right now? And what can you do? Is there something you can take off your plate? Is there some support that you can get? Is there more time that you can pray? Is there more time that you can meditate? Because that's going to make a huge difference in your metabolism. And then another thing is relationships. Relationships, whether that be support within your community, whether it be from your spouse, whether it be from your family or your friends, we need relationships. We need relationships in the exact same way that we need vitamin D. We are going to be less healthy without community. So I would encourage you to think about ways that you can make sure you're in healthy relationships. Are you being supported? Are you getting what you need to reach optimal health? As I talked about in, the, the, in our last group visit on community and health, um, these relationships within our community are absolutely critical to reaching optimal health because we can't do it on our own. So I would encourage you that if some of what I've talked about tonight has uh, set off alarms in your own mind or made you think of maybe, maybe it's labs that you need to get checked out, or maybe it's, um, you know, you need to relook at your sleep cycle. You need to rethink about the food that you're eating. You need to consider where you can be doing more movement um, or getting rest from that movement. That's also, that's an important point that I, I don't want to skip over. We have to be recovering well from our movement. So I can't work out really hard an hour a day, seven days a week, right? I'm going to break my body down and my reverse T3 is going to elevate. And my metabolism is going to slow. So if some of what I've talked about tonight sets off alarms in your own mind, then I would encourage you to send one of your providers, maybe it's me, send us a message. Uh, let me know if there's something that I can do or if you know one of the other clinicians in the Maxwell Clinic, whoever your clinician is, reach out to them and let them know what you're thinking. Um, and that's, that's it. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, I know it feels like it, it really flew by and I know we covered a lot. We talked about, uh, we talked about anatomy. We talked about how it works in your body, the physiology of it, um, and how you can make a difference in your own life. So um, if you have any questions, I would encourage you to type those in the Q&A right now, and I'll, um, I'll give a little bit of time for that to happen. Otherwise, it has been wonderful being with you guys. You know, um, these, are, these are a lot of fun, and um, we hope that they're helpful. So your feedback is greatly appreciated. Uh, looks like I have a question. So let's take a look here. How is the thyroid connected to the gut? So that's a great question. So I'm actually going to go back here to one of these slides. Okay, so the gut, let's say that you've got leaky gut um, or you have some type of you know, infection or some type of inflammation that's in the gut itself. Then that inflammation is gonna send a signal to the brain telling the brain, hey, we have inflammation here. So then that inflammation is going to cause the brain to send out a lower amount of TSH. Or it could send a signal to the thyroid telling the thyroid that, hey, we need to uh, put out more T4, which would then be converted into reverse T3, slowing down metabolism. So if we have good gut health, then that means reverse T3 is going to be lowered. Reverse T3 lowered is going to help us feel better. So this is one of the main things we look at when we're looking to heal leaky gut, and you guys know who have been patients of the Maxwell Clinic for a while, you know that you know, we do a very comprehensive look when it comes to labs at what's going on. And if we find leaky gut and we start to heal that, one of the things we'll usually recheck will be a reverse T3. Because what we're wanting to see is as we bring down inflammation in the gut, as we help heal leaky gut, are we helping to optimize metabolism? And often we are. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, if there are no other questions, 
then I hope that you guys have a wonderful night and um, have a great rest of your week.